Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. I personally like ribeyes. I'm sure that a lot of you out there like ribeyes because I know a lot of you are meat eaters just like myself. Today, we brought a special guest with us who knows how to cook ribeyes a lot better than me. Chef Rush. Jesus Christ, look at the size he's got. Python. Wait, wait, where's your chef coat? Give me a second. Okay, okay. Okay, there we go. Much better. All right, nice. Oh, wait, wait a second. We're cooking ribeyes. Ribeyes, boy. <laughs> What should we do first? Try to seize them? We'll pull out the types of ribeyes we're gonna have. Okay. So I put our ribeyes here. I'm gonna do a little bit of oh. all the going here. Is that a dumbbell? It is. <laughs> that's. <laughs> He's got a dang dumbbell with oil in it, man. That's freaking. So this is a dumbbell. That's freaking awesome. You gotta have a dumbbell. So, one of my favorites is a good old ribeye. You can never go wrong with ribeyes. Oh, no, never. That's my favorite cut of beef. Easy. A couple things to look for. This is a bone in, of course. Yeah. You want to have make sure they're cut evenly, the thickness for it. I usually do about one inch, just for the little boys. One inch. Two inches. <laughs> <laughs> Even more so. But the one thing I will do. You gotta get a little, get a little uh, pump get a little in. Pump yeah, in you first, gotta get a right? pump in. Yeah, get yeah. a little pump in, but I use this actually for a little bit of oil on top of here. Okay. Right, just so I can ladder it up. Sometimes we pat it dry, right? But I want a little bit of moisture on it because I want my spices to stick inside of that. Oh, okay, right? so that's why you do it because it sticks. It, so it like, kind of sticks yeah. to it. Okay. It's just a little bit, right? Yeah, just yeah. kind of like get it wet a little bit on both sides of it. So I'm gonna do simple, some kosher sea salt. Oh yeah, you gotta have salt. I do a little bit heavier grain. Now the one thing you need to know about salt is. Because it's one inch, people are like, oh my God, it's too much salt. Yeah. It has to penetrate all the way through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a two inch thick piece of cut of meat, it doesn't matter because once you cook it down, it's gonna render off and you're gonna wanna have that taste through it. Otherwise, yeah. you're gonna be putting salt on it all day. A guy I've seen cooking, actually on the Meat Eater show, called it a liberal amount of salt. Don't be afraid to put some damn salt on it. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Now, I'm using a little bit of garlic pepper, okay. uh, garlic powder rather. Garlic powder, I really don't have to because we're gonna use some fresh garlic. Okay. But I just wanna give it a little bit of over it just because I can. Good old crack black. Fresh crack, yeah. Fresh crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong with black. <laughs> yeah. I like those coarse grains of that crack black, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not those fine grains. So we have this done and it's very simple. Okay. Now, there's a couple myths that goes along with this about the room temperature, about when you pull it out, how you pull it out. The truth of the matter is that you can keep this out a little while. You don't have to temper it for hours just so it can get room temperature. Okay. You can pull this out because internally it is what it is. As long as you heat up that temperature and have it right, it's gonna cook all the way through. Don't just keep your meat out forever trying to wait for it to get tempered when you can just go ahead and start cooking it. If it's room temp, obviously it's gonna be good to go, but as long as it's not frozen. As long as it's not frozen. Yeah. These right here, like you said, if you look at it, it has that fat cap on it. Yeah. That fat that goes all the way across the side of it. Here's that one thing that you're gonna say, you can't eat beef every day. Who says that? That's a good question. Beef. I would eat beef every day if I could, if I could afford it, you know what I'm saying? If you can afford it, but the truth <laughs> matter all beef is not created the same if you're eating this part here every day then you got a problem yeah yeah sure look at my sexy body yeah. you eating fat that's where you get clogged up and all those good things but you know what i'm a beef guy i'll eat beef every day oh same. you can see beef in here you'll see beef right here you, you see, see some right beef here. right here you see beef right, right here. here so now we put these aside get ready and it's time to cook okay all right so we got some some nice butter right here gotta have real butter Real not, butter. not fake butter, real, real butter. butter. That's important, right? So we need butter for our searing of our steak along with some olive oil. I use olive oil, whatever. Whatever yeah. you may use, you go ahead and use it. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I'm using olive oil, garlic. That's the foundation of it. Oh yeah. I also use an onion, okay. right? Normally I use a rosemary or some thyme, but this time I'm just using a little bit of thyme for it. Rosemary, I use just a little bit of sprigs for it, but as you know, rosemary is so very overpowering, and I like that natural flavor from it. So the thyme is more my flavor profile than anything, just to go with this right here. It's gonna get a nice little infusion of that flavor. Dude, the smell of thyme is so good. Like, it's one of my favorite scents for any type of herb. I use it on steak a lot. I don't hardly ever get fresh though because I'm not spoiling myself normally, but this is a special occasion. Well, now, so yeah, yeah, this, this is a special, special occasion. occasion. So we got a garlic. What's the best way to, do, to go about this? You just, what? You can do a couple different ways this, yeah. right? I can show you at least six different ways to do it. I'm just gonna smash it down a little bit, just like that. And it falls apart perfect. Yeah, I mean, that you, you got 10,000 PSI's going down, <laughs> so of course it's gonna fall apart, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't yeah. you? And once you do that, when you pop it off, it just comes off Look Perfectly. at that. Just like that. You just right? saved so much time. You're just, not sitting there peeling yeah, everything. Another way you can do it, you use a little bottle or jar if you shake it to death or whatnot. If you don't have the manpower to do that, you can also just take your knife, get it down on a flat end, and just 
Get that pop? Simple. Just like okay, that. Okay, okay. And I'm not gonna lie to you. I love garlic. Oh, me too. Garlic goes good with fish, chicken, steak, pork. I don't care what it is. It tastes good with it, you know what I mean? You know, at West Point, we used to have this garlic festival every year. Garlic ice cream, garlic nuts, garlic chips, garlic, everything you could possibly think of was right there. That all sounds oh, delicious. Man. And besides, it's good for you. A garlic a day, it keeps the doctor away. <laughs> a garlic a day? Also the women. Oh, yeah, the men. Yeah, 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 because your breath will keep everyone away, too. I love onion as well. Is this usually you cut off both ends? I don't cut off both ends. I'll show you. Okay. One thing I'll tell you about the onion is, always have a sharp knife. <laughs> always be careful with this knife, right? Here's the proper way to hold this knife, like this. You gotta remember this. Holding here, okay. not like this. So if I were actually hypothetically gonna hurt someone, I wouldn't do this. I would do like this because I can fall full force and do whatever I want to do inside of here. So you've got no practice. One. I hold it like I eat rocks. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like me caveman. Like, like, me hungry. <laughs> me hungry. So I have it right here and you cut off here, right? Okay. Get rid of that end. Right here where the controversy comes from. People say do it a couple different ways this part. Yeah. Lead this part on and cut through it. The reason why if you cut that part off, your onion actually falls apart. Oh, okay, okay. Now you peel off. I like peeling off that outer layer because is usually wilted. I'm gonna show you two different things with this though. Okay. Here's one way you cut an onion, which is normal way that normal people cut the onion. But what happens is when you cut the onion this way, a lot of the moisture leaves the onion, which makes it a lot less crispier. You see that juices popping from it? Yeah. Now I'll show you another way that people don't normally cut it. This time, I'm gonna go like this. I like it, I see, I like that. You see how it looks? Very much different. Yeah. In comparison, if you look at this and look at this, very different. Just and also, when is. you're going this way, if you go too much, all you gotta do is turn it over and keep oh. going. So now we have our onions, we have our garlic, and we have thyme. Beautiful. Like, I know you're not here right now, but this smells so delicious. Just smelling that fresh garlic, the freshly sliced onions, fresh thyme. It's aromatic. Yeah. Now, what kind of pan is this right here? This is a nonstick pan right here. Okay. Is this a <laughs> pan? This is a Okay, no shout outs. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, no shout outs, sorry. All right, give me my money! Bruh. There's few things that are as good as a plate full of beef. You know one that I love more so than this? What's that? <sighs> a cap. A cap? Yeah. What's a cap? You don't know what a cap is? No, it's a cap. Oh, man. It's so underrated. Every go or get a chance, take the cap. Yeah. Don't regret it. It's just so succulent and so. Yeah. I was just in Vegas two weeks ago and they had the cap on there and everybody ordered the cap. And we ordered also a ribeye and we did a taste testing. Okay. We did the cap and we did the ribeye and everybody fell in love with the cap. Mm. I've never had a cap. I'll have to check that out sometime. So I'm using my portable because I don't want you to be over yeah, here behind bye. me. And I, I do like fire yeah. compared to, um, what's that other thing called? Electric. Electric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is that? You know, who, who invented electricity? Benjamin Franklin? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. You know, electricity. Not when you're cooking. Here? Yeah. Not here. Yeah. You reminded me of MREs and things. <laughs> You know, A rats, B yeah. rat, C rat, whatever. What you know? All the different rats, yeah. The UGRs. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, our next video should be turning an MRE gourmet. You know, I'll, br I'll bring some with me next time right. I come out. I've Seriously, got, I have two different types. I got cold weather ones and I got regular Ooh. weather ones. All right, this is gonna go down. Listen to that. That sizzle. That's a beautiful sound. So you just drop some of the cloves in different spots. Right, I'm stuffing them in like a stuffing stuff them in like a turkey. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm taking some of that real butter and putting it in between there. You know? Yeah. Now we're gonna throw some of this thyme in here and some onion. Wow. Check that out. Got some thyme, garlic cloves, onion. Beautiful. So I noticed you had a kukri, this is called a kukri knife, kukri, right? Yeah. I would imagine that there's a story that goes along with this thing, right? Look, it says IDG 2003 right there. So what's the story about this thing? So everyone sees me with this, and it's, yeah. it's actually my baby. Okay. I never cook with it because if you do know about the kukri, there's only two times you're supposed to take it out. Once is to clean it, and the next one, Okay, it's to, to remove something from the planet, basically. So it has been with me to Iraq, Afghanistan. It was given to me from actually the Napoleons, from the Gurkhas. That's uh, crazy. Which I humble, honor it to completely. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do a video of it soon with me redoing the whole parts of it. It's my baby. From the Gurkhas. And if you don't know who the Gurkhas are, you need to look them up and look learn a little bit about them because they are some bad Ooh dudes, let me tell you. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do a flip on this one. Look at that. All that fat and gristle just 
sizzling. Oh Close my. up. Things like this, I, I'm extremely grateful for. I'm sure like your time in the military, have you ever had like a steak that was just like eating shoe leather? Many times. Yeah, many times. See, I've had steaks that were like, you really need to put it in a blender first before you try to eat it, because if you chew on it, your mouth's gonna get tired. Like. And now, you guys have to understand, you going to the military, you have to already know that, is one of your main morale boosters in the military is chow. Yeah, chow, dude. We're gonna take these bad boys out here. God almighty, that is beautiful. So what's the plan with this here? So this is all of this, the leftover parts of it. I like making a pan sauce. So I have the pan sauce on. Okay. You know the pan sauce was just everything that was in the pan, onions, the garlic, everything, reduction, and now we're gonna get our natural, nice, healthy, delicious, Flavor. You're gonna taste a flavor that you've never tasted before. Look at that. No salt, just some pepper. Just some pepper. A little garlic. I'll do a little bit of thyme to go in. Yeah, that's beautiful. Next we're gonna do, I wanna do some potatoes. Okay. Right, I love potatoes, right? I like potatoes too. We're gonna cut these potatoes really quick. I got a potato pillar, but you know, I always wanna keep in practice. We'll go ahead and we'll cut those potatoes up. Put this inside of here. Okay. I'm gonna make a uh, smash mash. Okay. So it doesn't matter so much on this part. A few moments later. And then we got the potatoes in there. Okay. Gotta make sure you use a liberal amount of butter in there. A liberal amount of butter. A little bit of salt to go along with that. There we go. Some of this coarse pepper. Salt, pepper, butter. That's all you need. So you and need. it already looks fire. We can make this a little bit more creamier if we wanted to. So what do you use to, to make it creamy? We'll put just a little, a little bit, bit of milk in just there. A little bit of milk. Okay. So this is ready. We'll put that down. Now time for magic. Okay. This is the sauce right here. Amazing. Also, here's the potatoes. Check that out. This right here, look at this. Oh, bro, look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here in the middle. Country style with, you know, just some griminess on top of there. Meat and potatoes. Look at the color on that. We'll go here, and I'm gonna put this just like this. I gotta make sure I get you a couple of those, he's not those, that garlic. A little bit right of garlic here. that's been simmering and reducing. Look at that masterpiece. What is this right here? It's just uh, a little pomegranate going on top of this right here. Okay. Put that down. How important is how people plate their food, like display? You eat with your eyes. You eat with your eyes? Eat with your eyes. That's all I gotta say. Eat with your eyes. When somebody puts something in front of you that just looks a certain way, feels yeah. a certain way, it just makes your palate, you just makes it insatiable. Look at that. This is your plate. But I'm just. Oh, that's for me? Your, yeah, this is for you. Oh, this is for my you. God, you talking about? bro. Check that <laughs> out, dude. What we've got here now, finished product. How long do you think if you had to make an estimate of how long this type of thing would be to, to prepare for an average person? Like if you're making the potatoes, if you're doing the steak. If you notice, it was basically three steps. It was potatoes, meat, and then you have reduction. Yeah, yeah. Right? The meat only takes, if you think about it, it was only a one inch steak. I mean, you give it about a good 15 minutes. And okay. that, the potatoes are a little bit longer. Uh, we did them easy. Takes about another 15 minutes. When I say 15 minutes, you can do these simultaneously. So oh yeah, you so have, you can be boiling, you yeah, boil exactly. the potatoes while you're sauteing. Potatoes sauteing. First, really quick, put them yeah. in water, just let them boil. Then the reduction. Now, we let it simmer low and slow just because it had time. Yeah. We can do that really fast as well. So if you want to do a reduction, it can be a 10 to 15 minute reduction. So if I say a normal person, realistic, you want to do this part, it would take about 20 minutes to do this whole entire meal. If you were doing multiple things simultaneously. If you were doing multiple yeah, things yeah. simultaneously. You got to do the potatoes first, probably set that in the back since that's going to take the longest. And then you cook the steaks, set them off to the side, take all the rest of the, the pan sauce, start doing the reduction, chopping some other stuff up, prep it up. When I say 20 minutes, I give myself an extra five minutes, whether it be for plating, for heating things back up, or yeah. however, just to get prepared. And then you got the, the, the decorative, you know, the pomegranate. This kind of thing right here, I feel like would impress anybody if you could do this at home. If you decided, hey, you're gonna have your girlfriend over for dinner, or your boyfriend, or whatever, like you cook this kind of a thing, you're gonna blow anybody's mind, for sure. So, now I'll be honest with you. Okay. Your boyfriend only. Don't give this your to your girlfriend. Your boyfriend only? <laughs> don't, don't give this don't to your girlfriend. Don't give this to your girl. <laughs> this is for it's your boyfriend. It's not made for you women. If I want to do something pretty, I'll do the, the potatoes with a flute, slices around with the, the meat, and then I'll put the sauce in the control area. Okay. And then I'll put some fillets around it, make some colorful things for it. You would play it differently. Of course, 100%, okay. 100%. Okay. okay. Yeah, well this is a beautiful dish, man. Like, it's not super complicated. It's pretty simple. Anybody could do this. I right. want you to taste it while it's hot. Okay. Right, take a bite. See. There you go. Get a big old. Nice. That's the that's the best bite right there. Now you got to get old potatoes in with it. Mm. With some of that little pan sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sauce, the the flavor is so strong. It's been sitting and reducing with 
with thyme, garlic cloves, like whole garlic cloves that were smashed, all the sauce from the steaks that you had cooked it in. The flavors are pretty, pretty bold, I would say. Pretty bold for being pretty tamed. And if you notice about it, it wasn't a lot of sodium. They didn't have sodium in it. Yeah. It using natural stuff that's coming up from it. Yeah. And the reason why I did that from the mashed potatoes to the meat to the actual sauce of it, I want you to be able to control it. The one thing I hate is when people over flavor food to a point to where you can't tame it. Okay, so when you're when you're seizing the meat before you cook it, you want to use the, the coarser salt. Exactly. And then as you're finishing the dish off, you put some like finer grain. Exactly. Okay. If you need it. These steaks were like seven dollars a pound. And they turned them into gourmet. And this is cheap. Exactly. Anybody can afford this type of food. Like if you're buying six dollars or seven dollar a pound ribeyes. Potatoes are cheap. Buying whole potatoes is super cheap. And you can mash them yourself. Butter's not that expensive. Like all this, this is pretty, pretty easy to do. And it's a lot cheaper to do this at the house than it is to go out to a restaurant if you can't afford to go out to eat. And by the way, if you do go to a restaurant, they're gonna get that same cheap cut of meat, but they're gonna charge you 50 plus dollars yeah. for it. Plus 18 to 20% gratuity on top of that. Yep. Plus whatever else you're gonna get along with that. Cause you're gonna have a drink or you're gonna have some dessert. Yeah. So think about that. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize is that if you cook at the house, you save so much money and it's gonna be healthier because it's not gonna be over seasoned like your average restaurant food. It's not gonna be cooked in like seed oils and stuff like that. You can pick like, okay, I wanna use some like actual butter. But the truth of the matter is that enjoy what you wanna enjoy, do what you wanna do and just enjoy the food, yeah. you know, and, and make the best out of it. And that's the most important part. Yeah, anyway, I appreciate you taking the time. Appreciate you having me out here and, and teaching me a little bit, teaching hopefully some of you out there how to cook. I've learned some Something. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Also, check out Chef Rush. He's far more famous than I am. So, like, go check his YouTube out. It's Chef Rush across the board, right? Real Chef Rush, Chef Rush. Hey, yeah, real Chef Rush. Rush. This dude right here, I'm telling you, is the man. And brother, I appreciate everything, I appreciate everything that you have you, done here. Thanks you know for having me. We'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.